Welcome amigos. And as you can see behind me, I just built a 4K video editing and motion graphics PC. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can also build the fastest and most powerful PC computer for After Effects and Premiere under $2,000. Now, I'm not being sponsored by any of these companies, so feel free to choose any other components. I will put the links to all the components that I use in my computer in the description. And if you're on a lower budget or if you have extra money to spend, I'll also add some links for recommendations. Now, if you want to get started in After Effects, check out my After Effects Master Course. It's the fastest, easiest, and the best way to learn AE. You're going to get a rock solid foundation. Sign up for a free class. And remember that life is truly a gift. Make it count. And we now have the Life is a Gift t-shirts. Also, check them out. When you're looking for a new PC, the very first thing is which CPU am I going to get? You pretty much have only two options, Intel or AMD. And for a very long time, I've been using Intel. I've been a fan of their chips until now because AMD with their new Ryzen chip, it's amazing. So the one that I went with is a 3900X, 12 cores, 3.8 gigahertz, really fast. I gotta admit though, when you're comparing it with Intel, for After Effects, the Intel 9900 outperforms the 3900 by just a little bit. But the reason that I went with the Ryzen is because of the number of cores, and that comes in handy when you're doing 3D and especially when you're doing rendering. If you're on a budget, go with the Ryzen 3700X. I almost went with that one because of the price and the overall performance. And if you have extra money to spend, definitely pick up the Ryzen 3950X with 16 cores, you can't beat it for its price. For motherboards, you have two options if you stick with a Ryzen chip. The 550, the B550, which is a newer board, or the X570. And that's the one that I chose. Now, I didn't need all the bells and whistles, meaning I didn't need Wi-Fi, or Bluetooth because I'm using Ethernet, plugging it in directly for my internet. So I was able to pick up an Asus Tough Gaming Board for about $180, which pretty much has all the features that I need. And if you're on a budget, go with the B550. You can pick up one that's about $20 to $30 cheaper than the X570 and pretty much has all the features that you probably will need. It's important to place these standoffs in your case before you place the motherboard. I've done the mistake before in the past and it's a lot of work. The Asus Tough Gaming motherboard that I got maxes out at 128 gigabytes of RAM memory. And to keep it in my budget, I went with 64 gigabytes of memory. So down the road, I can pick up another 64 and max it out. And if you're using After Effects, you know more memory is better. I decided to go with the G-Skill Trident Neo. Now there's two versions. One is just a G-Skill Trident and the other one is a Neo. The Neo one supposedly works better with the AMD chipset. Plus it has, well, both of them, they have the RGB colors, which is kind of cool. And if you're looking for something simpler, just plain black, go with the Corsair Vengeance. They're also very good memory. I almost went with that one. Let's talk about the GPU. I definitely wanted something that could handle 4K editing and graphics, motion graphics. What GPU do I recommend for After Effects? And when building this computer, doing some research, this is the best bang for your buck graphics card. And number one is it's overclocked, it's super, it's a mini, meaning it's smaller design. The heat dissipation works really well for this model. Number two, when you rank it with a 2070, it's right under there in performance with After Effects. So what you'll do is you'll save a couple hundred bucks. This one was $415 after the mail-in rebate. And that extra cash, you can either keep it in your pocket or you can get a CPU with more cores or faster gigahertz. What's it called, CM? <laughs> it's called the MSI Super. I don't even know what it's called. For hard drives, these are my two drives. Let's talk about this one first. The Samsung 860 EVO. This is 
500 gigabytes. This is where I installed Windows 10. And at 500 gigabytes, it was about $80. It's big enough to have Windows 10 and all my Adobe and all my plugins and any other software. Now, the M.2, this is the Samsung 970 Evo Plus. This is one terabyte. I wanted two terabytes, but to keep it in my budget, because this was $180, I had to stick with one terabyte. Now you might say, hey CM, that's not enough to hold all your data, all my After Effects projects, videos, etc." And you're right, it's not enough, but this is my strategy. Since the M.2 is extremely fast to read and write, it should go really fast in Premiere or After Effects. So that's the reason I'm using the M.2. Now, when I'm done with my project, I'm simply gonna archive it on an external drive or on a 3.5 inch hard drive, delete it from here and on for the next project. To be or not to be, liquid cooling or fan cooling, that is the question. So I decided to go with a Noctua NHD15, all black, which is your best fan cooling system that you can get. Now, it's they say that it's as good as liquid cooling, it's super silent, and you can get it for just under $100. The only thing is, it's big. So when I was looking at the pictures, it looked pretty big. And when I got it, it was way bigger than I originally expected. I spent countless hours trying to research and find the smallest, most compact cooler for my CPU. This is what I found. Hey, sometimes you gotta go big or go home. To give you a little comparison, let's say you're ordering a Ford F-150 pickup truck, and when you get it, instead, it's the size of a bulldozer. And that's how big this thing is. It's so huge that when I expand to 128 gigabytes of memory, or I need to take out my GPU, I actually have to take out the Nectua because it's so big, it covers all that area in my board. The Ryzen chips, they run hotter than the Intel. So the Nectua NHD15 should keep it very cool. I'm excited to see how this fan works. For the RGB fans, and as you can see, I placed three on the front panel. I went with the brand up here. They're the best bang for your buck RGB fans that you can get. The plastic is not the best quality, but they're silent and you can get five RGB fans for less than $40 on Amazon. And the cool thing is you have this little remote and check this out. You can change the colors and you can have fun. I mean, this, this little thing is so much fun. When it comes to cases, it's a personal preference. As my friend Ali told me, it's an extension of your personality. It's like buying sneakers. Now, I love the cases that Fractal designs. They're a Scandinavian company. And I went with a Mesh FIC because number one, it's clean, it's simple, modern looking, it's white. It also makes the cable management easy for you. It's quality construction, quality build. So this is pretty cool. This back plate right here, you can hold up to three SSD drives and it'll go right here. Really nice design. And it's also a smaller case for a regular size ATX board. I didn't want a huge case. I wanted a smaller case and it fits an ATX board perfectly, but it's pretty small and compact. You might think it's a micro ATX case, but it's not. Last but not least, but this is very important because without it, you cannot power any of your components and that's a power supply. Now I had a Seasonic Snow Silent. It was only two years old, still in great condition, so I stuck with it to save myself a little bit of money. But I was looking at the Corsair RMX, the 650 and the 750 watt. It's about $130 for the 650, and that one fit in my budget. And those are two good picks. Amigos, I got it done. I wanted speed, I wanted power, and I think I got it done. Let's just hope and pray that it boots up. Now, you can see it's clean on this side, nice and organized, nice and tidy. But on the other side, not so much. 
well, no one's gonna see it, so who cares? So far, so good. We were able to boot up to the BIOS. It's looking pretty nice inside. Let's load Windows. 